So at the center of Atlanta's FUBU episode is the question of whether or not Earns or his classmate Devin's jersey is fake or not. This one has more stripes and that one got a patch. But y'all got a fake shirt. <laughs> Whoever their class decides has the fake jersey will be subject to bullying for the rest of the day. There's a couple of levels to this. Initially, it's the false notion that one's clothing is indicative of one's self-worth or value. For many of us, having the latest gear was and still is a boost to one's self-image. It's a means of gaining approval from others. It's capitalism 101. If you want to look cool, if you want to look rich, and if you want to be admired, you need this product. Furthermore, looking good and having designer clothing has been a huge part of hip-hop culture for a very long time. Whether it's Adidas sweatsuits, gold chains, Jordans, Polo, or Gucci, these high price items have always been synonymous with how fly or cool you are. In this episode, judging by the Equiminal poster in Earn's room, it's probably 1998. This is still at the height of New York mafioso rap. At the time, albums like Reasonable Doubt, Life After Death, and The Firm celebrated more than anything material wealth, decadence, expensive suits, cars, and champagne. The young average rap fan Earn internalizes this as having the latest gear will make me cool. Having the latest gear will make people like me. Before I go on, I am by no means saying that black people or hip hop culture are responsible for any of the byproducts of materialism or capitalism. I know that materialism is not exclusive to the black community or hip hop, but it appears differently in different cultures. For some kids, it materializes as being bullied if your name brand clothing is bootleg and or fake. Atlanta reflects this when Earn is frantically talking to his friend who's white saying that he'll be ridiculed if the other kids find out that his jersey is fake. The white kid is almost oblivious. This hierarchy doesn't exist in his world as he replies. Well is your shirt fake? I don't know. Doesn't seem like a big deal to me. I've worn this shirt twice this week. Later in the episode, a girl who likes Earn says that she won't date him if his jersey is fake. This is foreshadowing many of the money and status issues that he and his cousin Al will encounter as adults. Looking back a few episodes, to feel good about himself and to impress Van, Earn dedicates a whole evening to bawling out. On the Woods episode, a woman who Al's dating tells him that he needs to stop dressing like he's broke and that no one wants a famous person to look like them. Fubu takes a heartbreaking turn after Devin commits suicide for quote unquote having the fake jersey. When you're young and in middle school, the issue of having an authentic whatever or a real pair of Jordans is a big deal. The sad thing is kids like Earn and Devin don't have that adult figure to pull them to the side and say that none of this truly matters within the grand scheme of life. And because of this, sometimes it is the extreme of a kid being bullied and or shot over a pair of shoes. The more everyday example is that kids become adults who feel that they need name brand everything in order to feel valued. I was actually fortunate enough to be one of the lucky ones. I'll never forget it. My older brother came and picked me up one day when I was in middle school and as we drove around the city listening to Mace's Harlem World and he told me that most of the gangster rap that I saw on music videos and heard on the radio was indeed fake. Most rappers did not live the lifestyle that they rapped about. The cars, the clothes, and the models that I saw on TV were all paid for by a record company. So I never needed to feel like I was nothing without these things. That conversation that me and my brother had was vital but it didn't keep me from wanting name brand stuff. I, just like hip hop, had the chance to grow up. Most notably, Jay-Z is one of many who got the chance to grow and learn from the mistakes of the 90s. Jay-Z, like others past and present, are helping to usher in a new branch of conscious rap. For many, Jay-Z's 444 was an introduction to this so-called dad rap, which is less focused on materialism and self-indulgence, and more on becoming a well-rounded adult and financially intelligent. Ironically, now it's cool for rappers to look average. Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole, who are widely accredited as the upper echelon in this new generation of hip hop, choose to look broke as they understand that material things don't matter. So I'm gonna keep it a stack with y'all. One day to school, I wore a Michael Jordan champion Wizards jersey. I got clowned from 8 a.m. 
to 3 p.m. And I don't know if you know this, but back in the early 2000s, Champion was considered fake. But now today, everybody's wearing Champion. Champion headbands, Champion wristbands, Champion sweatsuits, Champion windbreakers, Champion hoodies, Champion socks. And that goes to show you, even if what you feel in the current moment feels impossible, it's probably a life lesson in disguise. Everything comes full circle. Thank you for watching this video. Please share it with a family member or a friend. And as always, if you like my videos and would like to help me make more videos, pledge one dollar whatever you feel to my Patreon page. This keeps me out of the Hunger Games and in front of yo face. We got more movie reviews coming yo, and we got more book reviews coming yo, and we got more of that random stuff coming your way. I'm in the bathroom.